What we're going to do first of all is start with, with uh, a little injection in the feet. And these feet are so dry on the tips of the toes that it's going to be probably very difficult to get our needle in the tips. And what we want to do is where there's only three points that I like to inject them from. And that's the tip of each toe, well four points, the tip of each toe and or the ball of the foot. Anywhere in between, if we start injecting, we start creating a lot of holes so then when we do our final uh, foot injection later, we're going to have a lot of leakage. So I try to uh, do a minimum of holes. So might be able to inject all three toes from the same point if we're lucky. And so we're just going to fish a needle in there and start our rehydration here. And you can see the toe swell as it goes down and you don't have to get it all at once. You start with a little bit and uh, let it soak in there and then come back again a little while later. Now you can see with just just in minutes you can see the difference between a fully plumped up foot and, and our dried foot that we started with here. Really, really a, a plus. When we, get to, when we get to mounting this bird it'll make it easier to run our leg wire in there plus it'll e be easier to actually inject our final injection fluid in the leg. Soon as we can get these wings cut loose it will take some of the pressure off that skin and I'm working at that joint right in here. It's deep down in there and we try to whittle through the joint and that allows that wing to fall downward and take this pressure off of the skin right. We're going to invert the skin at this time and uh, work on the wings. The skin the humerus bone down to the radius and ulna and then continue to skin and strip the feathers away from both the radius and the ulna and invert the wing all the way down to the pinion joint. We just continue to skin down. We're down to the point that I would would call the elbow and we're just going to go ahead and skin right around the elbow and continue on down the wing. Now we're down to the what I call the pinion joint which is the wrist. Then we're just going to cut these tendons loose at this point and strip the meat off the bone. What we, how we treat this bone on the end is I like to leave the length of the bone intact but just grind off the edges so that I have a narrow, a narrow end. You simply do that with the Fordham tool. The other thing is to uh, get the marrow out of this bone by drilling a the, drilling a little hole in the end of the, the uh, ulna and there we go. That same little hole is going to be what we use to access uh, the ulna with the wire, the support wire that's going to ultimately hold the wing out. With just a, pipe cleaner. We're ready to turn our attention to the wings and wiring the wings. The gauge of wire that we put in a bird's neck or wings or legs have everything to do with what kind of position we plan to put the bird in. A lot of people ask me, what, what wire do you use in a mallard? You know, and I go, well, what is it doing? Is it standing on one leg? Is it, is it uh, you know, sleeping? Is it resting? Is it outstretched? And each, each bird, according to its positioning, has, can have a different gauge wire in it. Okay, we're going to insert the wire right in the same hole that we, that we uh, drilled to. Actually, this is going to be plenty stiff. That was the same hole that we drilled the um, marrow out with. Do a little tape, the wire to the bone here.
And we're going to wrap with some jeweler's grade toe. And this fine fiber material works great on the wings. Again, we're going to try to configure the wings similar to the legs with the widest point being at the very top. Okay, the other thing that I'd like to do is to fill this cavity between the radius and the ulna with a little uh, critter clay. Force it in there. I like to make sure that at least it comes up around the back side here where our feathers attach. This gives a little clay padding and, and, and uh, will help us attach those feathers to back to the bone area. So we look for our little hole and very, if we're going to wiggle it, we wiggle it just a little bit, a little bit of caulking and we can go ahead and put this wing back. The area I want to make sure that it gets caulked is along this back edge for sure and then I do a little bit up along either side. And I set the tail with a mixture of Magic Smooth and this is a two-part epoxy and it is extremely sticky. I call it ducky pucky. It works just ducky. And so it's a 50-50 A plus B. So we mix it up good. And the trick here is to put the goo in without getting it all over the feathers. Now, slide that over the top. Press the tail feathers into the slot. See how they're going to operate. And we will put a pin to hold it temporarily. We've now got him stitched up and we're ready to select the support wire and secure that. And we're going to do that from the exterior obviously since we've already got him stitched. Okay, at this time I'm trying to put the general bends in, get the legs back into position. And just checking to see if all the skin is evenly positioned on the body. Okay, I think it's time that we can put some caulking in the head and neck area. This, well, another great thing about caulking these skins is that it really keeps them from drying out. I'm going to make sure that we have enough moisture in here around the eyelid, so I take a damp paint, paintbrush and painting in the inside of the skin with some little water. And we will fish this down through the skin. We can go quite a ways down in there if we choose. We'll go down the neck a good portion. Now with your finger you can smush that caulking around in there so that it's evenly distributed. The trick here is to get the Q-tip underneath the lid. That way you're wiping the inside of the lid and you're wiping the outside of the eye at the same time. Want to stretch these flight webs out. The beginning of the scapular group Starts right here. We take our pin and drag that scapular group forward. And it helps sharpen this flight web in here is what that does. It gets shoulder feathers in place. Our fingers are generally too thick to do this kind of preening, so a nice uh, pair of tweezers really comes in handy at this point. We adjust this head skin. It's going to affect the, our eyelid adjustment. So what I want to do first is to get these eyes, what I would call roughed in at least, and get the eye, eyes adjusted. And essentially what I do is I, I try to center the eye skin on the eyeball and I pull the front corners and the back corners and start to tuck them in on the ends 
and then the bottom lid gets tucked from way underneath. And a waterfowl bottom lid usually has a little light feathers like that and you want to make sure that when you're all completely adjusted that you are not going to see any of those light feathers. They should be tucked up underneath in the bottom lid. Okay, I'm ready to show you my secret wing wiring method. This method is actually quite confusing in the beginning, but if you can remember the three things that it does, you'll figure out how to continue to configure this wire. The three things that this wire does is it holds the tertials and the secondaries up, such as this. It limits the forward motion of the pinion joint, such as that, and it extends the primaries, such as this. So it gives a wing this kind of a shape, or any shape we want, but it gives us the control in order to make this kind of a shape. And you wiggle that in. Now, I hold these feathers up to the, to the place where I think I want them, and I kind of get a vision of that, and then I bend this wire right about where I think that is. And we'll go ahead and flop the feathers over the top and see how we're looking here. Okay, now they're held up. The next thing this wire is going to do, its next job, is to limit the forward extension of the pinion joint. So in order to do that, if you notice, there's a dip right in here. We want this wire to come right into this natural dip. If you run your finger along there, you can feel it. So now it has to be bent up so it comes in where the dip is. We figure out at what, what distance along that wire do we want this wing extended. If we use it to there, then we're going to make our bend right here. Now it has to do the third and final thing is to hold these primaries out. So that wire needs to come back out here and ahead of the primary somewhere in a spot that can be wired to. Make a loop in the wire, bring them out. Any of these feathers need to be adjusted. We can do that right now. We're just finishing up this wing. These feathers here all are adjusted now. The last area we're going to look for here is the tail and we're going to uh, pin this tail out. We have that ducky pucky in there so it, within another hour it should be kicked off enough to actually set it pretty darn solid. Make sure you have symmetry right. Dust your rump feathers so that they go right down the center the body. Spread the toes or compress the toes.